All right, we are going to look at the pendulum now for simple harmonic motion and how do we generate our equations for the pendulum period. So I have a pendulum swinging back and forth here and I want to know what is the period of that oscillation. So how we set this one up is I like to do it with a rotational problem first. So I'm going to think about torques and angular acceleration for this pendulum. So in order to do that, I first need to kind of get some forces on here. And so acting on this, I do have gravity and I do have tension. Now you notice tension is along the radial line, so I don't have any torque from that. Mg is going to produce some torque. And remember, torque is produced by the R vector cross the force vector. So I got to find the perpendicular component of that force and then multiply it by the radius here. And so here we go. So I got to find that perpendicular component, which would be this one here, which I have as mg sine of the angle it makes. So as it's coming back, all right, so now I can say that my sum of my torques equals i times alpha. Now I'm going to make this a simple pendulum one. I'll do the physical pendulum also. Um, because it's a simple pendulum, this is a point mass, so that's concerning my I value. So I have mg sine of theta times L, because L is my distance from my axis of rotation to this. Now, one thing I do have to kind of keep in mind here is if I call this direction a positive theta value, this is then going to have a negative torque or vice versa. Um, either way, I do need a negative sign there, um, especially with that sign. So I'm going to be a little more explicit. I'm going to say this is a positive angle, so this is a negative torque. Equals m times L squared, because that's how far away it is from its axis of rotation for point mass. That is the moment of inertia, times alpha. Now I can cancel some stuff out here. So we see I have an m on both sides. I can cancel out an L as well. And we get to this point here. Now, ideally, we want to get into the form, and this goes back to our simple harmonic motion, what, what our goal is here for a function, is I want to have the form of alpha equals negative omega squared times theta, where this is my angular frequency, not my angular velocity, my angular frequency. So this is a constant value as that pendulum swings back and forth. So I look at this and I go, okay, let's move some of this around. And so I have alpha is equal, so I'm going to divide the L over to the other side. So I have negative G over L times the sine of theta. Now we do have to make something called a small angle approximation here. The small angle approximation says, so the small angle approximation says that as long as my angle is measured in radians, um, the sine of the angle is approximately the same as the angle in radians. Um, and so I'm going to show that to you on your calculator. So let's flip over to the calculator now. All right, here I'm going to give you a little bit more information about that small angle approximation. So in order to kind of show this, what we got to have is we got to have our mode in radian mode. We're then going to go and we are going to graph essentially theta or x, the sine of x. And I'm also going to show you it with tangent of x because this is pretty similar at this level too. And then we're going to hit graph. And so we see a, the x value go off here. And then here comes the sine. See how it's starting to curve down? And then we bring tangent in and their tangent kind of curves off to the top. Now down on the bottom here, I kind of have it so every 10 degrees is marked. And so this is 10 degrees, and you'll notice that sine of theta, theta, and tangent of theta are very close at 10 degrees. Once I get out to 20 degrees here, you'll start to see that that tangent of theta really starts to hook off there. Just though maybe like 15 degrees it starts to move off, but it's still pretty darn close. And then by 30 degrees, tangent's well off, sine's off too. So what we're going to say is whenever we talk about our small angle approximation, the sine of theta and theta are going to be pretty similar up to, a, for sure, 20 degrees. All right, so we see here that, yes, the sine of the angle and the angle are 
equivalent up to about 20 degrees. So as long as my pendulum isn't swinging more than a max angle of 20 degrees, we should be okay. All right, so I'm using that small angle approximation, I'm going to go ahead and change this to theta. And so I get alpha is equal to negative G over L times theta. And so what we can pull from this is in order to get it in this form, I kind of say, all right, I know what my angular frequency is going to be then. My angular frequency, and I, I want to stress this angular frequency, this is not angular velocity. The angular velocity is changing. It's zero, and then it's the maximum, then it's zero. Okay, this is the angular frequency. This is just like frequency, like five hertz or something like that. It's a constant value. Okay? So the angular frequency here is going to be the square root of g over l. Now, the last step to kind of get to that period idea is I have to kind of go with the, the idea that period is equal to 1 over frequency. Now, this is true if my frequency is measured in cycles per second or hertz. But this down here, we talked about it being radians, so I'm going to have to get this to radians per second. So what we have to do is we'll have to use the idea that frequency times 2 pi gives us our angular frequency. So we do have to convert between angular and traditional frequency, I guess you would call it. So in our case, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by omega. All right. And so then I can plug that in so I get the period is equal to 2 pi times the square root, but it's 1 over, so it's L over G. And so this is how we get to the period for a simple pendulum. So the qualifications of this equation are 1. It has to be a simple pendulum, meaning I have a point mass, the size of that object at the end of that string or rope is of insignificant size compared to the rope itself. Now we'll look into that when we do the physical pendulum. Um, it turns out it's not as big of a, you know, 1% of the total size. It's, it's much larger than that. It can be like half the size type of thing. Uh, so that's one condition. The other condition is we have that small angle approximation in there too. So we do want to say limit it down to about a 20 degree um, amplitude. All right. But once we get those two considerations done, this is our period for a simple pendulum. And this is how we go ahead and derive that. All right, there we go.